Good afternoon, this is Susie Stevenson um, down here at Halcyon Yarn, um, hooking rugs with yarn. And uh, this piece, I'm going to show you how to get started on and show you some basic things. This is my book, Designing and Hooking Primitive Rugs. And before we get started with hooking it, putting it on its frame and stuff, I just want to show you some of the variety of um, uh, fibers you can hook with. Uh, specifically a wool that's here and very very tempting to roll this all up you don't have to just go like this and then you've got your strips all perfectly caught really really easy also check out your stash because I'm sure that as you get moving along you've got a lot of balls just like this from other projects that you didn't know what to do with and this is how you use them um, also here these rovings that are already dyed can be taken apart and hooked or as I did I overspun them and then I hook them into the water so you can see some of this exciting water here uh, when I first started hooking this piece and I got home it was quite plain and I decided to jazz it up a lot with some of my own things and that made it an awful lot more fun to sit down and hook. Um, some real basic things. Zigzag around the outside of your rug so that you don't lose it because if you don't zigzag around the outside it's going to fray and you're going to be sorry because these get tangled up with everything. Um, the other thing is when you're using a frame that has the gripper strips, you're going to lose some of the parts of your, what you're hooking. They're going to get stuck on the back and you're going to end up with pieces like this. You're going to make sure you pull them through and hook them. I design and hook all my own work. And um, this one is another boat. I'm just going through a boat phase, I guess. And my son drew a picture. He drew a series of them. And, of course, I changed it totally, but made it large and traced around it. And when you do your edges, you know, bear down hard, sign your work, your design, and leave enough space around the outside so that it'll fit on your frame. Sharpie markers, really, really um, useful. Use the black ones, not the colored ones, because the other ones uh, will bleed. So those are some tips for designing. Uh, I'm going to show you some tips on hooking with the wools. And I'm going to work on this one. The boat will be red, the water blue, and I think that this one really needs a star up here in the sky. So I think I'm going to put a star up there. These lines are guides, and that's the really fun thing about hooking. Nobody knows if you follow the lines or not, or if you hook outside them. You can change as much as you want when you design your own. They see the finished piece. Rug hooking, you don't need a lot of equipment. You need a frame of some kind. This one has the gripper strips around it, and it's well used, as you can see. Um, and it's, if you get that, it's kind of uh, sticky and it hurts. So the linen will actually stay on it very nicely. You can also use a um, hoop if you want or not any other types of frames that you have. Uh, stretch it on there really good to get it good and tight. Now with the rug hooking you need very very little equipment. You got to have a hook of some kind. You need a pair of scissors if you're going to do this and you need your yarns. One of the really nice things about using yarns is that you don't need a cutter to run around with. And that's um, great because they're heavy and they're expensive. Um, advantages of using yarn. Um, it's really, really easy to hook. There's a wide variety of colors and weights and novelty yarns. Um, you can hook in thick or thin pieces. Your yarns can be doubled up. Um, there's dye lots so you don't have to do any of the dyeing. You can get exactly the same thing a second time. Um, one yard, I'm not sure this is exactly a yard, a little bit longer than a yard, hooks about one inch and maybe we'll try it and see exactly but that's about what it hooks so it's easy to gauge how much you actually need. Um, 
Be careful of the gripper strips because after you've hooked a little bit and you move it around on it, sometimes they have a tendency to pull your yarns out. So the other really neat thing about using yarn is that when you hold it on the back, you don't have to worry about whether it's flat or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a really quick uh, lesson on how to hook with some yarns and uh, you'll be ready to go. Because this isn't a uh, you know hook by number type of kit, um, I'm making my boat red. I like red boats. I have, we have a, a gray one, but when you hook a gray one, it doesn't show up really well. Um, I'm going to reach down with this hook, it's in my right hand, that's my dominant hand, in through the linen, and I'm going to pick up this strip underneath. So I'm going to reach down, pick up the strip, and pull it through. When I do that, I'm going to leave the end to cut off later, and I'm going to leave the end on top. I reach down, hook it, and pull it up through. I'm hooking in this design because I want, in this um, direction because I want it to look like planking of a boat, of a wooden boat. I'm also pulling my strips up so that they kind of open up and blossom out a little bit. So, when you hook with fabric strips, you have to keep it flat. Um, with wool yarn, it's a lot easier because you don't have to worry about that at all. You can hook in any direction you want to hook in. This wool is quite a bulky, nice wool. It's really filling up this space quickly, and I do believe I'm going to get more than um, one inch out of this strip. So that's good news for us all. Um, I try to keep my loops straight. I mean, the, the height of them the same, but when you're done with your hooking, you press it anyway, and so that will even everything up. And here we're going to come to the end very soon, and I'm going to pull up this loop. Now my next strip is going to go right in the same hole that this is, and I'll just keep right on going. And I clip my ends after I've done a big part of it, not before. Okay, so I'm going to lift up my ends and clip them off. And then just to show you, I've done two strips and it looks like we got three, just over three square inches there. So it's going really, really quickly. Um, really great coverage. I'm getting the lines of the, the planking that I want. Um, it's an outline and fill kind of, you know, idea on this. I'm going to do my mast next. And I'm only going to go up so high just because the frame is, you know, limiting. So you reach down, you kind of put the wool on it. I'll show you in here. You reach down, you kind of push it on a little bit and pull it up. The hook part hauls it up. You can also, sometimes when you pull up, one of the loops will come out. You can pull up and go back on what the loop that you've already hooked. Or you can, whoops, or you can pull to the side a little bit. And one hook may not be exactly what you need. You might be looking around for quite a while before you find a hook that you really, really like. It's, it's, a, it's their tools, and you've got to have a good tool. Uh, there we 
we go. So I've come to the end of where I want my strip and I'm just going to cut it off. Make sure I get both strands of it. So I'll be all set. When I go to do my sail, I'm going to do this white. Now this is um, a bright white. I might um, actually do the sail in something a little bit um, more yellowy, like an onion skinned type one. That's going to be quite bright when we get it done, I think. Sometimes it separates and I just pull it back down through and do it again. One of my friends said, it takes about 15 minutes to teach somebody how to hook, but it takes a lifetime to teach them how to design and hook rugs. So um, I was teaching you how to hook today with some yarns and, you know, hopefully you can go home and play. I um, really want to get this part here a little bit done first. Partially because I want to try some of these uh, rovings to show you how to do that. So. I will show you the back to let you see what it looks like in a few minutes. I'm going to leave the loop there. With these uh, rovings, I'm separating them out a little bit. And I want to kind of put it along here to look like the spray on a boat. And I'm just going to use it exactly the same way that I did the strip reach down and pull it up. And you can pull it any height you want it to be. High or low. You get to decide. And again, all this stuff is readily available right here at Healthy on Yarns. This is the back side, and this stuff isn't very, you know, flat, but this is pretty flat on how that is. I've got one little end here I've got to pull up through and, and to do. But that's the way it should look. You shouldn't have crossovers and all that type of stuff. It's a lot of stopping and stuff. I'm going to show you another fiber that I readily use a lot, and that is the mohair in here. And it has the little curly locks to it. And when you hook that in, I think it's really fun because you can leave the edges up. And I think that probably this is really good for a wall hanging because it's kind of like my mermaid's hair and it will get stuck in the vacuum cleaner. Um, kinky um, hand spuns are another really neat thing, or overspun hand spuns would be fun in this. You can use them as flowers, you could use them as waves. Um, it kind of curls back on itself, so that's fun to use. One of the tips about hooking with wool is to pull it up higher than you would an ordinary one, uh, a wool strip, um, because it kind of settles down back on itself. Um, I really like the shine and the sheen to the, to the mohair. It's kind of fun in there. Um, it can also be needle felted like I did my mermaid's hair if you need to um, really uh, keep it in there good. Um, the other thing that you can do with yarns, and I could have done this with the boat. I'm just going to go over here and hook a little bit because um, nobody will know if I pull this out later. If I decide I don't like it, 
because, well, maybe you guys will know, but nobody else will know um, because you can't see the holes. So I'm going to pull this really high. And I could have done the boat this way. It would have been lots of fun to do the boat this way. Really high up. It takes a lot more wool to do it. And then, when you're done pulling them up, you can clip each one of them. And this will create a raised effect like a Waldoboro rug. And as my husband says, only you could make rugs looking messier. So that's a real um, quick lesson on how to do that. But it's raised up a lot higher than the rest of the waves would be. And then you can hook down low beside it and it really looks like it's high. I'm going to take one of these overspun pieces that I did and it's all twisty and stuff. If I were hooking a flower garden and this were pink or purple like it is, this would hook really great. I could pull it way up high and it will twist back on itself and makes a really cool flower. It made pretty cool waves too. But for now I'm going to put a few pieces in the sky because I think that it will add a lot of interest in it. So I can pull it up high if I want. I can pull it down low. Um, you hook it exactly the same way. The parts that were very thick do pull up kind of hard. Um, so be careful on that and be careful they don't hang on the back too much. Um, one more little thing that um, is this stuff, this roving. You're going to have to take it apart a bit. And I like to kind of pull it a little bit. You have to find your um, staple length basically on it you'll know how far to pull it. And you can do the same thing with that. Pull it up high. I'm just going to clip that off after. And you pull it up exactly the same way. This way it kind of mirrors my water in my sky. All right. I think I've done enough of those. I'll just pull that right up, clip that off, and clip that off. Okay, so when I've got my hook here, my hook has a flat little bit for my thumb. I'm going to reach down through the linen, and I'm going to catch these two pieces of wool and pull them back up through. I don't have to worry about them being twisted on the back like I would with a strip. I also don't have to hook in every hole. I'm going to let those go high. It's easier to hook towards you than it is to hook away from you. But you can hook in any direction you want to hook in. So I'm probably skipping two or three holes in each one. I pull it up high because when this goes on the floor in my house, it's going to feel nice and squishy to walk on. And I like the way that feels. The other great thing is for here, these little bits of yellow, I call them poison. They add a lot of interest and excitement to my rug. Um, you got to have a little bit of that into Piece. Whoops, you know, I've got my piece getting a little too long. And I'm going to go through the holes that I've just finished hooking in there to pull it up. 
the friction holds it together. So you got to kind of keep tension on it or else it will pull it right down through. And when you first start this, you may find that that happens. Don't get discouraged. Maybe go in a different direction. That might help you. Um, I think hooking with yarns or using yarns in your hooking is a wonderful way to use up your stash and other people other people's stashes of wool. Okay, and I'll come to the end here as far as I can go because of the strips. I'm going to cut it off. And cut this off. And you pull it up a little bit to get the tension on it, clip it and then you don't see the ends. When this whole rug is done, all these spaces are filled in. Oh, well, I'll back up a bit. I've left these spaces empty here because I wanted to add some of this really dark navy blue in to really make it look like a night sky. But if you look at a night sky, it's not always all black or all really dark. You have places that are light in there too. Um, and I wanted to make sure I got some of that in there. When you're done with, when I'm done with this, I'm going to take it off and I'm going to look at the back. This is the part that no hooker really wants you to see. Is, okay, I've got a piece here that's come through. I'm going to have to find that piece here and pull that up through here and then clip it off. These gripper strips that hold everything so nice and tight will pull it out if you're not careful when you pull it up. So I look for that. That's the first thing. Then I'll take a pressing cloth that's wet and I, with, a, with my iron I'll press the whole thing down on the table. And then I'll cut this off along here and I'm just going to, well, here I get to the end here. Turn my raw edge in so that you can't see it there. And I'm going to sew it on like that after it's pressed. There's a number of ways to finish off rugs. And that's another whole video, basically. Uh, that's the easiest way to do it. If you're going to put it in a place that doesn't get much traffic, that's an awesome way of finishing off a rug. Thanks a lot for your interest, and I hope you have fun hooking um, with the yarns. Um, check out Halcyon Yarns uh, for a wide variety of yarns and colors, plus hooks, linens, books, dyes. The possibilities are endless here. Um, there's also, you know, books, mine being one of them. Uh, you can also talk to Halcyon, anybody here um, with this signature collection of all of their wools and colors that are available uh, to help with your hooking pleasure. There's also this, the Kingfisher collection, and it shows you, has all of those in it, plus a lot of other goodies. Um, this is Susie Stevenson, author of Designing and Hooking Primitive Rugs, uh, published, by published by Schiffer. Uh, happy hooking.